Hello, I'm back in Laramie, but I thought I'd continue recording the lectures so we can have them um, on YouTube. And so uh, these are the lectures that we'll be going over tomorrow in class. So I'm gonna cast my uh, iPad again. And uh, let's see, here we go. Share, okay. Um, <clears throat> Go oh, and there we go. Okay, so uh, uh, let me turn this sideways. And so we're going to talk about uh, the materials used to reinforce concrete, and we'll start with concrete. And so the objectives of this part of the lecture is to go over the notation used to describe concrete. We'll talk about the strength of concrete. We'll talk about how you select the design strength versus the average production strength. And we'll talk about the short-term properties. And so uh, <clears throat> here's a picture here of uh, a batch plant. Uh, here's uh, a cement truck. So in here is cement powder. Okay. And this is a concrete truck. So please never call this a cement truck. There's concrete in there, uh, and this drum spins around mixing the concrete. In the cement truck, there's cement powder. Um, and more uh, accurately, this is not some concrete truck, it's actually a ready mix truck. Because they do have uh, concrete trucks that go out to sites uh, that are remote and they have sand, gravel, and cement, and water, and they mix <coughs> on the site. And so this is already mixed. It's ready mixed, ready to go. And so even at a young age, my daughter, uh, she knew what a ready mix truck looked like. I was very proud of her for this drawing. Okay, so the key issues uh, we're going to talk about today are the notation, uh, the strength, how the water cement ratio and admixtures affect the strength and other properties. Uh, we'll talk about quality control, specifically F prime C and uh, required average F prime C R. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, the short term loading behavior of concrete. Okay, so first of all, notation. As I mentioned earlier, in concrete, uh, we use the letter F for stress and uh, C stands for compression, uh, or concrete, sorry, and the prime stands for compression. Okay, so F prime C is uh, the specified compressive strength, okay? and F C is just the stress at any level, so not necessarily when it breaks, and F prime C is the strength that it breaks at, and in particular, we want F prime C at 28 days. That's the standard time to test the strength, there's nothing magic about that. It's just roughly a month, but we pick 28 days because it's divisible by seven. And so it'll be the same day of the week. So if you made concrete on a Tuesday, 28 days later, it'd still be a Tuesday and you would break it. And F prime C R is the R stands for required average. Um, for the longest time, I didn't know what the R stand, stood for. So I remembered it as F prime C R as F prime C raverage, um, and it really is required average, so R average or raverage. Okay, intention, okay, uh, <clears throat> we don't have the prime, see, so it's F, and there's two tensile strengths. There's R uh, for rupture, modulus of rupture, and you get a little beam and you break it. Uh, these beams are six inch square, uh, this span here is 18 inches, and the overall length is an inch and a half overlap on both sides, so it's 21 inches long, and you put these loads at six inches apart. We don't do this, or we used to do this in CE ARE 3210, but it just takes too much concrete, so we stopped doing that. Um, this tensile strength uh, relates to the tensile strength in a beam because it's a beam being cracked like that. Okay, <clears throat> um, and you get this stress here, 
is the tensile strength, and you get it by doing m y over i. Um, the tensile strength we got in 3210 was this Brazilian test or the split cylinder test. And the stress distribution looks something like this. And uh, you learn the formula for that in CE3210, ARE3210. And uh, to get these two strengths from the compressive strength, uh, you have the uh, rupture strength is 7.5 square root F prime C. And the tensile strength is 6.7 square root F prime C. Uh, and F prime C is in PSI, and FCT is in PSI. Uh, to make this work, you always use PSI. Anytime you see a square root F prime C in this class, it's PSI. Okay, and effect of water cement ratio. Uh, the lower the amount of water to cement by weight, the higher the strength. Uh, for both uh, modulus of rupture and compressive strength. We actually did this experiment in uh, ARE CE 3210 in uh, last semester. So what was that? That was fall 2019. I should plot our results and see if uh, they come, come within this range. Okay. <clears throat> Um, the admixtures that you can add to concrete, so if you remember, concrete is made up of water, uh, cement, fine aggregate or sand, and coarse aggregate or gravel. Okay. Uh, to that, you can add things like silica fume. Uh, it increases strength, it reduces porosity, making it more durable. Uh, fly ash. Uh, it's cheaper, so it substitutes for the cement, but it also uh, stops against alkali silica reaction. It uh, makes it more flowable and um, suppresses the early strength. High range water reducer, if you're using a really low water to cement ratio, it's hard to mix the concrete. This allows you to mix the concrete. We use this in uh, 3210. Uh, accelerators can make the concrete set up faster and retarders are the opposite. It slows the initial set. Okay, <clears throat> um, so quality control, uh, we don't want to use the average, okay, that's F prime C R, because if you use the average strength, that means half of the time, your, your concrete strength will be less than average. Okay, so what you wanna do is set your strength somewhere out here. Okay? And what we wanna do is, uh, if you use this equation, it's like one out of 10 times uh, the, it'll be less than uh, F prime C. And this one here, one out of 100 times, it'll be less than F prime C minus 500. So 10% of the times you'll be below your specified strength. That seems like a lot. And 1% of the time, you'll be 500 PSI below your specified strength. Okay, so here's an example. Here are some uh, numbers, the, and again, we learned in 3210, you actually need 13 tests for those equations to apply, but we'll just do this, okay? And so the average of this comes out to be that. Here's the standard deviation, okay? So this is the one in 10 test, okay? So uh, you get that number, let me get my calculator out. Let's punch that out. Let's see, um, let's see, 1.34, 147. And actually, uh, in the class, you learned a better equation than this, but 39.50. And this is the one in 100. Let me do this, okay. Oh, there's a, let's see, that's a minus sign. Okay, so 4142, enter, times minus 500, 4300. 
So uh, your F prime C that you can count on is 3950, okay? The lower of those two. Okay, uh, here are the stress strain curves. This is interesting. Uh, there's a couple things. First of all, for our class, uh, but this is not really true. Uh, <clears throat> uh, these experiments and papers I, I was reviewing in uh, Japan, uh, the strain at failure is roughly constant, and we're gonna just say it's always 0 0.003. So I want you to remember that number. 0 0.003 is the strain where concrete breaks. Okay, um, and then, but as you go okay, up in F prime C, so here are all the maxima. Okay, see how the maximum is happening at a higher strain? Uh, as you increase the strain, the thing I want you to see is see how the slopes are increasing? So a higher strength concrete has a higher modulus of elasticity, or E. So the modulus of elasticity, okay, we just saw this, varies with the compressive strength. Okay, uh, there's an equation for it. So this, if you take the unit weight in pounds per cubic foot to the 1.5 power, and you multiply by 33 and square to F prime C, and again, all is in PSI, that will give you the roughly the E or modulus of elasticity. But if it's normal weight concrete, 145 PCF, you plug it in there, uh, you get this. So this is typically the equation we'll use in this class, 57,000 square root F prime C, again, PSI, and the answer is in PSI. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there are different cement types that you can use, regular, Low alkali, so it, it gives you more sulfate resistance. High early, we talked about this in the 3210 class. There's a cement plant in town, Mountain Cement. Uh, <clears throat> they only make high early, uh, and they and then they just sell that only. Uh, low heat of hydration. If you're making massive concrete structures like a dam, uh, it, it reduces the heat, and then high sulfate resistance. So if you're making some kind of tank that's holding chemicals that have high sulfates, uh, you need something like that. Okay, so strength gain by type. <clears throat> uh, uh, so these th things are rigged to have the same 28 day strength. The high early strength, uh, as it implies, early it's stronger, but later on it's lower. So that's kind of interesting. But we doesn't matter because uh, you design for this strength any anyway, and so any gain after 28 days, that's just bonus, or uh, in Louisiana we say lanyap. It's thrown in for extra. Okay, and so that's all we kind of need to know for now for concrete and their short-term properties. We'll talk about creep and shrinkage more later, but uh, yeah, that'll be it for now. So next topic will be on steel.